Let's solve an MIT final exam physics problem. We have an Atwood machine that consists of a fixed pulley wheel of radius R and uniform mass M. We also have a massless string connecting the two blocks of mass M and 2M. The lighter block is initially positioned a distance D above the ground and the heavier block is positioned on an inclined plane with an opening angle alpha. There is a coefficient of friction mu between the surfaces of the block and the inclined plane and the string never slips. Part A determine two conditions on the angle alpha which allow the lighter block to move up or down. Firstly, if the block is moving down, then m times g, which is the weight of this block, will be greater than the tension t1, which will be greater than the tension t2, which will be greater than the component of gravity acting along this inclined plane plus the friction. Mathematically, we can write this as mg will be greater than t1, which will be greater than t2. The component which is parallel to the slope will just be given by 2mg sine of alpha, plus the frictional component, which will be given by the coefficient of friction, multiplied by the normal reaction, which is 2mg, multiply by cos of alpha. By looking at this side and this side of the inequality, we realize that mg will have to be greater than 2mg sine of alpha plus mu 2mg cos of alpha. Of course, we can cancel out the factors of mg and what we're left with is that one will have to be greater than two sine alpha plus mu multiplied by two cos alpha, and then dividing both sides by two and this inequality and then just rearranging, we're gonna get that sine of alpha plus the coefficient of friction multiplied by cos of alpha has to be less than a half. Now, what is the condition for the block to actually move up? Well, the component of gravity, which is pulling this mass of 2m down along the slope, will first of all have to be greater than the frictional force. It will also have to be greater than T2. It will have to be greater than T1, which will have to be greater than mg, which is pulling this block down. Mathematically, we can express this as 2mg sine of alpha. Once again, this is the parallel component of gravity acting along the slope. And then we're going to take away the frictional component, which is the coefficient of friction times 2mg cos of alpha. And this expression here will have to be greater than t2, greater than t1, and ultimately greater than mg. And once again, we can do some cancellations and then we're also going to be dividing by half and we get the condition that the sine of alpha take away the coefficient of friction, cosine of alpha has to be greater than a half. And those are the two conditions for part A. Part B, assuming that the lighter block moves down, determine its acceleration. To find the acceleration, we're going to write down three equations of motion. One for this mass, one for the pulley, and one for the 2m mass. Starting out with the leftmost block, which can only move in the y direction, we can write that mass times acceleration, which is y double dot, but those two dots, I just mean the second derivative of y, will be equal to the sum of all forces, which will be equal to mg take away t1. Our second equation will be for the pulley wheel, and we now have to use rotational mechanics for this one. So we can say that I, the moment of inertia of this wheel, multiplied by the angular acceleration, theta double dot, will be equal to the moment of inertia of a cylinder, which is a half mr 
squared and then theta dot. So moment of inertia multiplied by angular acceleration will give us the sum of all the individual moments. So we're going to have T1 times R and then take away T2 times R because it's acting in the opposite direction. And our third block is only moving up and down this ramp. So we're going to need another coordinate system. So should we just call this direction parallel to the ramp to be the X direction? And our third equation of motion will be that 2M x double dot, the acceleration in that direction, will be equal to t2, and then we're going to need to take away the gravitational component, which is just 2mg sine alpha, and the frictional component, which is the coefficient of friction, then we have 2mg cosine of alpha. And here is the most important constraint of this problem. If this string or rope is not slipping across the wheel, all of those accelerations will have to be equal. So we can write that y double dot will have to be equal to r theta double dot, which will have to be equal to x double dot. In other words, we can change the second time derivative of x with the second time derivative of y. Now let's consider the second equation. Because y double dot is equal to r theta double dot, we could rewrite this equation as a half times the mass multiplied by y dot multiplied by r and this will be equal to t1r take away t2r. And now we can cancel out those factors of r and what we're left with is that y double dot will be equal to 2t1 over m take away 2t2 over m. And now what we're going to do is take this expression for y double dot and plug that into the first equation. In other words, we're going to get m and now rather than y double dot, we're going to write 2 times t1 over m take away 2 t2 over m which is equal to mg take away t1. So those factors of m are going to cancel out and what we're left with is 2t1 take away 2t2 is equal to mg. Now I'm going to take this factor of minus t1, I'm going to bring that over here which will give me 3 times t1. And finally I'm going to rearrange for t1 which will be equal to mg over 3 plus 2 thirds t2. And now we're going to consider the first and the third equation. Let's rearrange the third equation for t2. So we're going to get that t2 will be equal to my double dot and then we're going to add on plus 2mg sine of alpha and then plus the frictional component which is the coefficient of friction multiplied by 2mg cosine of alpha. Well, hang on a minute, the first equation is telling us that my double dot is equal to this expression. So let's plug this expression into there. And what we'll get is that t squared is equal to 2mg take away 2t1 plus the rest of this expression, which is sine alpha plus mu 2mg cosine of alpha. Now my goal here really is to find an expression for t2 in terms of all these angles. And now let's take this expression for t1 and plug this back into this equation here. And what we'll get is that t2 is equal to 2mg take away 2 times t1, which will give us minus 4 thirds t2, and then take away 
2 times mg over 3 plus the rest of this expression. And now let's bring this minus 4 thirds T2 onto the left hand side of this equation. So we're going to have T2 plus 4 thirds T2, which will give us 7 thirds T2. And on this side, we can take away 2mg, take away 2mg over 3, which will just give us 4 thirds mg plus the rest of this expression. And now let's take a factor of mg out, which will give us 4 thirds plus 2 times sine of alpha plus the coefficient of friction times 2 times cosine of alpha. Let's multiply all sides of this equation by 3 and then divide by 7 giving us that T2 will be equal to mg. Then we have 4 over 7 plus now 3 times 2 will give us a 6. Then we're dividing that by 7. So it'll be 6 over 7. Sine of alpha plus the coefficient of friction multiplied by the same factor. So it'll be 6 over 7 times the coefficient of friction multiplied by cosine of alpha like so. Now that we have an expression for T2, we're going to plug this into this expression and find T1. So T1 will be equal to 2 thirds and rather than T2, I'm going to write this expression like so. Plus mg over 3. Let's multiply those fractions out carefully. We're going to get that t1 is equal to mg multiplied by... Now 2 times 4 is just 8 and then 3 times 7 is 21 plus 2 times 6 is 12 and then 3 over 7 is 21. So if we're to divide those by 3 we're just going to get 4 over 7 sine of alpha plus the same fraction which will be 4 over 7 times the coefficient of friction times cosine of alpha and then plus mg over 3. Now we can take out a factor of mg outside of the brackets yet again so t1 will be equal to mg and then we're going to get 8 over 21 which will be then be multiplied by a third that's left from this expression. So we're going to get 8 over 21 plus a third. If we bring that to a common denominator, we're just going to give me 7 over 21 plus the rest of this expression. we're going to get is that t1 is equal to mg multiplied by now 8 plus 7 is just 15 so 15 over 21 if we divide that by factor of 3 it will just give me 5 over 7 plus 4 over 7 sine of alpha plus 4 over 7 coefficient of friction cosine of alpha Whew. And now that we have an expression for T1, we can directly sub that into equation 1 and finally find our acceleration. So from equation 1, we can write that y double dot is going to equal to g take away T1 over m after having divided both sides by m. And this will equal to g take away rather than T1. I'm going to write this expression divided by m, which is just equal to g 5 over 7 plus 4 over 7 sine of alpha plus 4 over 7 coefficient of friction cosine of alpha. Let's take a factor of g outside of the brackets. So we get g times 1 take away 5 over 7 take away 4 over 7 sine of alpha take away 4 over 7 mu cosine of alpha which is then equal to g times 2 over 7 take away 4 over 7 sine alpha take away 4 over 7 mu cosine of alpha and we have 
found the acceleration of this block. To have a look at another really hard problem for the International Physics Olympiad, you need to have a look at this video right over here.